sometimes, you know, a normal man would feel like Devi Sri Prasad if he's wearing all these things because we speakers want to talk, not to have all these minds. Yeah? I want to start this talk because it's very personal. Uh, when they started the theme, Indulging Diversities, because as a young kid who was born in Old City in Hyderabad, who, won, who grew up, who understood what is diversity, what better topic than to talk about? Because as a person who was born in an orthodox family, I was thinking always, what is diversity? Because there's nothing called diversity for us, it's a way of life. Because most of them, we just talk about, we heard about diversity from different speakers today. When they asked me, sir, what topic you want to talk about on diversity, I was perplexed. I was thinking, kya baat karu? Because you know, when you just talk about you, it's all about diversity itself. Because everyone, every individual here, today there are shortlisted 5 to 10 speakers here, but people who are there in the crowd might be thinking, you know, when someone is introducing you, they just say, uh, you know, as a kid, my father told me the story of Isaac Newton. It was very funny. He was he in a diverse background. He used to study under the street light. Funnily, one day, I don't know, but I just went out and sat under the street light. They were lighted my place. And we had an impression that, okay, if you want to grow up successful in your life, you have to study under the street light. I never knew that. And as a student, we are also confused with a lot of success stories. And these days, thanks to the social network and WhatsApps and Facebook and all these things, we are getting a lot of motivation every day morning and our relatives care about us much. They send a lot of motivation quotes every day. And we are very, you know, we get so much motivated that we keep mute on a lot of WhatsApp groups. And when the topic of diversity thought, I just thought of my first venture in 2009 when I was a third year student. In my college days, I started something called Society for Triggering Engineers Development. When I started Society for Engineering Triggering Engineers Development, my only worry was the diversity in engineering colleges was not utilized as how it should be. Most of them, when I, you know, even then, I was perplexed again. I went to Google, I just, just checked what is diversity in Telugu. Then it was something called Vaividya. Then again I checked in, in Hindi. Vividatha. Chalutin, they both are starting with why. And we all belong to the generation why. And we always ask why. TEDx, why. Attending, why. And most of the times, whenever you do something in the college, the most of the answers for why is attendance. <laughs> and then, the third part why. Because everything starts with why in life, because we don't question a lot. We don't question a lot, we don't accept a lot. Because we, we always question a lot. Because we want to be the so-called intellectual. These days, you know, if someone wants to be an intellectual, it means that you should not accept anything. <laughs> you know, you should say, if someone says, if I say this is right, then someone says, it is my left. <laughs> okay. I understand that it is your left. But the point is, it's my right. Most of them will never try to keep yourself in the other shoes. Being training for the last six to seven years, I understood only one thing, that you should, as a public speaker, you should never talk what you want to talk, but talk what others want to listen. As a speaker, the first quality, as an individual, the first quality, as a human being, the first quality to get accepted is to accept. And in diversity, the first thing is people don't accept others. They, they think that they are right. They are on the right side. And most of the people who think on the right side are left. And they don't always accept the right side because people think that okay, it's right. The second thing, when people start accepting change, because we don't like the word change at all, because change is the only constant thing. And change is a, such a constant thing because I know post demonetization change is tough. <laughs> Getting change is tough, I know. And the biggest change makers are present in RTC buses, our conductors. They give change. <laughs> and the change is very important these days. You just understand I'm talking about two change. 
There's one change which is a way of life. And the other change is the financial monetary things which we have in day to day lives. And frankly, again, I always type in Telugu because, you know, I'm not that great in English. And again, I just checked what is change in Telugu. They said chill <laughs> And then someone asked me, okay, you should be chiller, you should chiller, you should be changed. Then when I got it a word, there's another word called transform. It's not about being chiller or having a change, but it is about transforming yourself as a better individual. Because we did study in Ivy League schools. I didn't go to an IIT. Because you know, in when I was in 12th standard, that one damn day made me study in a local engineering college. And I was thinking, okay. Am I less compared to anyone? That's where I started because I accepted my college first. And most of them do not accept their conditions till four years. They don't accept the diversity. They start complaining. They just be an XYZ guy. You know, they always complain about others. They say, I can't accept this. I can't accept. The first step for diversity starts from accepting the conditions which are there. Trust me, being to IITs, that was, most of the IITs do not have proper auditoriums at all. What is the difference? It's students. The self-motivated students. And there was one college. Yesterday I was in Dehradun. I was giving a talk in Dehradun and most of the students asked me one question. Because they had a perception that you are from South. And you know, at the college, chairman walked up to me and said, Sarji, you connect going to I said, student, student hota hai. Jaha bhi jai, student hui hota hai. Backlog 80 kt hota hai. M1 max hota hai. Par sab eki hota hai. The diversity, India is such a country where diversity is there. You know, it is within us. We are born, born and brought up with diversity. You know, I still remember when there was my school. There was something called 10th class form. They asked, what is your caste? I didn't know the cost of asking caste. Then I said, I don't know. And I went to my dad and I asked, what's a caste? Then he laughed at it because he's a, he was our principal. <laughs> <laughs> and he just said, okay, uh, you write uh, OC. Then immediately for me, OC, overconfident. <laughs> I said, sorry, I can't write this. I have to, I have to, I have to be the change maker. I'll write not applicable. <laughs> then he said, well, my mobile not be sure. <laughs> and immediately I said, okay, uh, I am self-confident. I'll write SC. <laughs> then he said, sorry, your father is OC. <laughs> Overconfident. You should not change all these things. You should accept change. That's when I heard the word accept change for the first time. Then I asked him, I'll read ST. Self talented. <laughs> SC and ST, you know, you're self confident, self talented, man. Then he said, no, 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 you should not write. You should write only OC. Then I said, BC. Below confidence. <laughs> because I'm losing confidence talking to you. Man, I don't know whether I belong to this, I belong to that. He said, no, you are overconfident. That's where first thing I thought, change will not start anywhere. It starts from within you. It starts from your family. Because most of the diversity acceptance starts from your family. Today we talk about TEDx and people say, you know, the ideas inspire and people get motivated today. But if your family or if your culture, if your ecosystem back home is not right, you can't accept diversity. You can't accept change. I grew up in a joint family. That's where you understand to accept no first. And when you accept no, you become an entrepreneur. <laughs> because trust me, whenever most of the times when you say idea, you have an idea to almost at least 35 times to venture capitalist, I accepted no. And you should learn how to say no. The second thing. When you accept no, when you say no, it means that you're accepting the change first. That's the first step in diversity. The next thing, which I want to which I just want to talk about. Meet like-minded people who are unlike you. Most of the time, they say, okay, you know, in general, in TEDx, what happens? You meet a like-minded person. I meet a like-minded person. You know, people say, we are friends. Because 
we studied 12th standard in the same school. We are friends because we talk English. I know. And we are friends because we are coming from the same bus in Tarnaka. Because he will always keep a seat for me in the evening. They meet only like-minded people. They feel like, oh, and they say, we have to indulge diversity. And he will say, no, there was a nice, in Dehradun there was a cultural fest. And I asked the chairman, what is this, what is this? This is girls entry, this is boys entry, this is our entry. <laughs> They said the first thing, you know, because most of them, such as the conditions today, you know, we talk about diversity, we talk about like-mindedness, we say, you know, but we say, we have to break it down. And there was a girl, you know, I was working with a company called Infosys, you know, I, I feel pride in talking about it. I was I worked there for four and a half years as a campus recruit. There was one girl from a rural area who joined because there was something called JKC then, and there were people coming from rural areas who were joining. This girl joined and the first day she walked up with, you know, she walked up to the team lead and she said, uh, this, uh, there are three boys and uh, I'm the only girl in the project. Uh, can you put me in a project where there are only girls? <laughs> and I said, why? I said, no, the team lead was shocked to listen to that. It was the first day of induction. Because we are trained inside the college like that, you know. We are trained. We felt like, okay, this is project group, role number wise. <laughs> 241, 242, 243. One writes observation, other answers saliva, another the writes record. And these three are good friends. No individual talent. And some people start business, entrepreneurs, founder, co-founder, co-co-founder. Startup. You know, we are a startup. No, there are no campus recruitments. Okay, it's okay. Let's everyone start. There is no need of giving jobs. You create jobs. And they say, how you guys met? What is the diversity? How you have chosen your team? No, he's my best friend. <laughs> no, he's my best friend. That's the reason we are partners. There's no other reason. Okay. That's how you choose a team. And people are understanding why there is no big product company from India. Why we don't get big product companies. Why we don't build a global product company out of India? When I started, most of them, they asked, what is this, Uber for this, Facebook for this, or you know, no one says this. They always compare with the bigger things. When you compare with the bigger thing, how can you build a better thing than that? We are always good CEOs. We are great CEOs. We are very proud of Satya Nadella. We are proud of Sundar Pichai. We are proud of people, not products. Because we look up to people, or either we look down on people. Because there are only two things which we do. Because my dad said, in my 10th standard, when I got 552, which was the highest percentage, it was a board, and he said, you should not become arrogant. I'll take you to our relative who is working in Microsoft. And it was a Sunday morning, he was lazy. And I went to the place, there was nice coffee and tea offered to me, I was sat there. He said, like, my dad said, First, diversity is killed there itself. They say, you should not think different, okay? And then my dad says, be yourself. And they tell, how to be? They say, be yourself. You should be yourself. Then they tell, this is how you should be. This is how you should be. This is how you should be. Then tell, be yourself. <laughs> and the nice images of be yourself are kept on Facebook. It's almost like giving happy Mother's Day on Mother's Day. I love mom on Mother's Day. Facebook, check, likes, Amma will use Hey, Agar. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Auntie, happy Mother's Day. Your friend's mom. To impress her. But not your own mother. That's how today, anyone, they talk about like-mindedness. Don't be with like-minded people. Be unlike them. Because it's you. How you create an identity for yourself. Today, 
in my college days, I still remember I was seen as an outlier or a misfit. Today morning, my mom was asking me, you know, where are you going? I said, I have a TEDx talk today. I'm, okay. So, why are you wearing a kurta and a jeans? I said, diversity. <laughs> you know, I, I want to show diversity. I said, no, you, you have a nice blazer, man. You wear a blazer. I said, it's hot. Blazer is not our culture. It is England. And in the first day of Infosys, I asked a question. To, in the induction, it was Shibulal, who was my CEO. I asked, sir, when I'm coding, this tie is troubling, sir. It is coming in between when I'm coding. He didn't have an answer. I'm not talking as a rebel or a radical. But after four years, when I was resigned, Vishal Sikha was our leader. And the first rule he did, he removed formals because he doesn't like how to do it. They said, in the first day, the definition of diversity was you have to be a global company so that you have to understand everyone. And then the fourth year, when there is a new CEO, he says, we are a global company, you should be yourself. I'm not comparing or anything about these two great gentlemen out there. Both have great traits. The thing is, a culture is set by a leader. A leader sets a culture and others follow. So most of the times, whether you want to be a leader or a follower, you decide the rules, you decide the culture. Culture is not there anywhere. There was one college in 1960 which said people should wear aprons because the engineering was civil engineering and mechanical engineering in those days. Because something falls on their chemicals or anything on their dress. People just followed and in 2009, in C programming lab, my lab instructor asked me to wear <laughs> apron. I don't know what kind of chemicals will come from computer and fall on. He said, I'm sending you out of lab because you're not wearing an apron. I said, okay. Apron, why? Is this a workshop? Because our culture is set like that. Because there was industrial revolution, there was bell, there was uniform, British required workers. And they required workers and they required people who write letters, clerks. That's the reason we were asked to write letter again and again. Five marks, ten marks. Informal letter, formal letter. And we are asked to indulge or imbibe diversity, but we don't accept change. Now people ask, you become a change maker. That's where you're seen as a misfit, square peg in a round hole. Because you don't fit. Because you talk truth. And today, system doesn't want to change. And people talk about skill development, people talk about diversity of the technologies which are coming towards students. Students should adopt new technologies. How on earth when there is an inspection every other day? People can't accept technology. There is Ruby on Rails and Python which is happening here. They'll ask you to write hash include stdio.h. And you ask people to accept diversity. And we can't accept diversity because we, there are a lot of diverse technologies which are coming. There was a student last year, he went to Amir Pit, United States of Amir Pit. <laughs> There's no Donald Trump in it. And he said, I met him. He said, Charan sir, hi. I said, hi man, what are you doing here? I'm learning big data here. I said, awesome. Great. Why are you learning big data? Full demand man. <laughs> I said, okay, you know SQL? Query query nahi jaanta hai, big data jaanta hai. Ar basic query likh rahe hai, database ka. Then he said, no sir, SQL is not a divide big data. That's how our students are. Then he knows it, they don't know. They feel that there's someone is sharing in the cloud, when they start looking at clouds. Which cloud? Amazon cloud? Azure cloud? They don't know where the cloud is. They feel, okay, if it rains, the data goes off. Such is the innocence levels. If you have to accept diversity, the change should begin with the colleges, the root. Today, any best college doesn't have accreditation. ISB, not recognized. IAM, not recognized. Ashoka University, not recognized. When you are not recognized, you are recognized. <laughs> that is diversity. That is unlike people, not like people. If you start identifying only like people, you will be in your comfort zone, like this red. So good. You'll never come out of it. People say, think out of the box. They say, sit in the class. <laughs> People say, innovation cell opens at 5 o'clock in the evening. 
That's how most of the ironies are, like they are oxymorons. They say and they contradict within themselves. And the next thing which I want to talk about, not lifelong learning, we don't learn, we want to earn. Everyone wants to earn. And the fad is like that today. They don't want to be in a diversified group because they feel that they lose their identity. But you get your identity when you are in a diversified group because it's you. And people are forgetting that you, they are worried about we. They feel like, okay, you know, there's a campus recruitment fair happening, a job recruitment fair. They don't even tell anyone because there's a competition, right? If I tell my five of my friends, it's almost like the important questions which you get before internals. No one forwards, but everyone gets. And they don't want the competition, they don't want the diversity, they want to be alone. They just want to be alone, they don't want to question the status quo. And here the point is why I'm saying lifelong learning, because it might be a faculty, it might be a student, they're coming from diversified to, they're teaching you a lot of things. A teacher learns every other day. And today, the kind of movies or whatever it is, they start predicting these guys as, you know, as someone who is just doing a stand-up comedy. And when I was introduced, the speaker said, you know, he has a great sense of humor. I felt, I always have a change of humor. But most of the times, crowd laugh at because they are laughing at themselves. They're not laughing at anyone. They feel that they have undergone the same expression somewhere or the point. Today, people say, well, there was someone who drives a BMW because of his dad. And he's in the same locality here. He comes to me and said, I want to do something for the private commute system in Hyderabad. I said, did you travel in RTC bus? <laughs> and he said, sorry, I have an idea. I, I drive a Beamer. I go in BMW. I said, you travel in the RTC bus. That's how you learn a lot. He said, sorry, I'm joining ISB. I'm joining MIT. I'm planning for an MBA, so that I have to understand that. And I said, you travel in an RTC bus, you understand 45 characters. That is business. <laughs> he says, I'm an MBA. There was recently one guy who, uh, who applied for a job in my company for marketing. Brennan. And the first question, he said, I know the first question. You'll ask, tell me about yourself. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to ask. This is a matchmaking or matrimony? <laughs> Because our country is such a service-oriented nation, we want someone to tell, Nabiru, you see, you know, For such jobs, we are prepared. And there are sessions for campus recruitment training. They say, today it is tell me about yourself session. I'll teach you what is tell me about yourself. And everyone please write down. Okay. And in an interview, when a campus recruitment happens, three, four, and the HR gets so furious at same wala lagna, same to same sir, pale same. I come from a rural family, my father is an agriculturist. Okay, I come from an urban family, my father is a teacher. Replace, fill in the blanks. In a college, I said, they asked, sir, after the talk, can you plus please tell our students how to tell them? I said, I'm a born Gemini, I would love to do multitasking. Because Gemini's are multitaskers. Immediately, there's no diversity, there's no learning. Immediately, the other student walked up. I said, now you tell, I'm a born Scorpio. I don't know what Scorpio do. It's almost like I'm a born Fortuner. I'm a born Innova. People don't learn, they just copy. And you know, when you are in a diversified environment, you learn a lot. That's where I started StuMax, Student Magazine Network. Because I wanted, college students to learn from others, imbibe, observe, see from others. You, the peer-to-peer -peer learning happens more rather than the faculty to student. Because you learn, because the best teacher is a student who teaches me before five minutes before the exam. He teaches you more than anyone else because you remember that five minutes man, And you understand that. So I want to sum it up telling that in a nutshell, Indulging diversities doesn't happen in groups or in masses. It happens through individuals. When you indulge, so you know when you make the word indulge, I just remember ice cream. Because you indulge into something which you like. 
you don't indulge into everything. But when you like diversity as how they are, you know, a lot of people they say, I like you, but these are the changes which you have to do. <laughs> okay. On the first day of the relation, they like you. And the last day of the relation, they say, all are the list of the characters or the traits which I don't like. Because accepting the wrong things in others is diversity. Because no one is perfect. So start accepting people, start embracing change. And thanks for this opportunity. Thanks.